Hello everyone! Welcome to my library. My name is Melissa and welcome to the Historical Romance Readathon vlog. I'm starting this on Friday, Friday evening actually, because I actually had a busy day at work today. Um, but I did have time during my lunch break to read a little bit, so that's good. Uh, if you didn't catch my TBR video, I'll just let you guys know what I am reading. So, this is the book that I started. It's One More Blue by Heather Graham. I have thoughts, guys. I have thoughts. <laughs> this book is so good so far. I'm buddy reading it um, with Shay from Shay Geeks Out. And so we're messaging back and forth about it. And we're both really, really excited about it. Because it started off really strong. Um, it It has a prologue that starts off with the heroine of this book. Her name is Kiernan and she owns, uh, she is running this house in the midst of the Civil War and um, the Union has just taken over Virginia and so they come to like a, a brigade of soldiers comes to her house to burn the house down and then this gallant Union soldier rides through and is like, stop what you're doing. I'm taking this house over as a, as a, um, uh, like a, as a hospital, a field hospital. And this Union soldier ends up being this man that she used to know way back when and who she used to love. So yeah, uh, and she didn't want it to happen. She's like, no, I'd rather burn my house than help your cause. But um, he ends up being like, well, too bad. That's what's going to happen. I'm, I'm saving your home. And so, yeah, the chemistry is off the charts. It's so good. And then right now it's flashed back to um, prior to the Civil War happening and, and Harper's Ferry, if you know that event. And so, um yeah, she is slowly, not slowly, basically forced to come to terms that, oh, the North and South are at war now and uh, my family's hopes and dreams and um, their aspired, what is it, their, their way of wealth is going to be destroyed. And so anyways, um, she's also young and she's like a Southern, she's a young Southern Belle. And then this guy is 10 years older than her and is a doctor. I'm, I'm seriously, I'm like, I'm so excited about this story so far. So, um, yeah, he actually used to be part of the Southern cause and then he switched to the union and it hasn't said why but that's another reason why she hates him uh in the prologue is because he's a traitor to her cause so anyways i'm loving that book uh okay so then the other book i need to pick up tonight hopefully is morning glory by lavril spencer um my buddy reads discord group has already started chatting about it and I know um, they're really enjoying it, so I'm so excited to jump in too and hopefully enjoy it as well. And then the book that I'm still in the middle of is On the Way to the Wedding uh, via audio. I'm listening to it while I work, while I get ready, and um, by work I mean like when I'm answering emails and stuff, like stuff that doesn't require my brain. <laughs> um, but I'm really enjoying this as well. It's really good. I. It's not, so far it's not like a favorite Bridgerton of mine because I think the plot is a little bit unbelievable. Like, basically the plot is that Gregory um, Bridgerton instantly falls in love with the main heroine's best friend. And he thinks he's in love with this, this girl, her name's Hermione. And um, so he's in love with Hermione and he's trying to get Lucy, the heroine, to help him out and to like tell him the tricks of how to woo her and to me I'm just like that would not fly in real life like I, don't, I can't see how he's gonna turn his mind and convince her that he loves 
he loves her instead when he is just totally gone for Hermione. And it's just kind of, I just feel bad for Lucy at this point. Like, um, she's also resisting because she wants, she wants her best friend to marry up. And she's currently, Hermione, her friend is currently in love with um, someone not suitable. So she wants Gregory to fall in love with her as well and for them to become a couple so that her best friend isn't ruined, I guess. Um, but yeah, so I'm just kind of waiting. They keep having these moments where they're like looking into each other's eyes or they're dancing together or whatever, where they have chemistry. But at the same time, they're always just talking about her best friend. And I'm just like, that's, uh, I wouldn't like that if that were me. So yeah, those are the three. And then um, if I finish this, I'm 40% of the way through. I don't know if I said that already, but if I finish this, then I will pick up Brazen and the Beast, but I need to finish this first. So there's that. Um, other big news, I got a job offer today. Crazy, I just got off the phone like an hour or so ago with um, the partner that gave me the offer and wow, I have a lot of decisions to make. <laughs> um, they're giving me substantial amount of time to figure it out. Um, so, I mean, I'll, I'll keep you, I'll keep you guys posted. I, it's, you know, just a side, side note about me, but yeah, it's, it's a big deal. I'm like, I'm nervous because I don't want to burn bridges at the company I'm at right now. I, I really enjoyed my job. Um, but this, this job would be a potential step up for me and a pretty big career move. So, um, it's definitely one I just need to weigh out. So yeah, that's going to be on my mind <laughs> this week for sure. Um, so if I seem a little scatterbrained, that might be why. <laughs> um, but other than that, my plans for the week, I, uh, other than just cranking through these historicals, that's my goal. Um, my other plan is I really, really want to go thrifting. Um, I have some store credit at this one store that has an incredible historical romance section. And so... Um, I've actually got some plans, some, some things in the works to make this fun and to make it kind of an entertaining vlog as well. So, uh, I'll share those as I go, but that won't happen probably. I have to help my, uh, brother and sister-in-law move in tomorrow. So that's going to be like my whole day. Uh, man, I mean, you know, you know, you truly love someone when you help them move, <laughs> but Anyway, so that'll be my Saturday, but maybe Sunday is when I'll probably go and do that. But okay, I keep rambling. My only other thing I'm going to try to do tonight is I need to still make my bullet journal page for this readathon. So I really want to do that. My bullet journaling skills are literally just mm, three out of 10. <laughs> uh, so don't, I, I can show you guys what I do in the end, but it's more like a list for me. It's more just like a checklist to, you know, have that satisfactory check after I finish a book than it is like for me to have some sort of creative design outlet. So I don't consider it like very aesthetic or anything. So I'll still show you guys, but it's not, it's not that cute. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to stop this clip. <laughs> steeper at home but I just think it is the coolest contraption so you put your tea your loose leaf tea in here then you pour it with your hot water I mean this might not be novel to any of you guys but it was pretty cool when I bought it and then um, you just put it over your mug and then it will just leak out but yeah it'll just leak out and then 
you're good with your tea and it all of the nasty stuff from what you steeped is still in there but then you just get this perfectly steeped tea it is my favorite thing ever i just i just love it Good morning vlog. <laughs> I just got done helping my um, brother and sister-in-law move and uh, my husband has to go work now so I'm home alone and I just thought I would update you guys. I ended up reading a lot more in both of these books last night. Um... <laughs> wanting something but I'm hoping I can update and she's not gonna be too loud when she wants something she's very vocal so we'll see so I wanted to say that morning glory I got to up to chapter five last night I love this book so much it's way more of a it doesn't feel like a historical romance does like it feels like historical fiction to me um, the characters are, um, very, oh, just both of them are so broken and so desperate for love. And it's just like eating me inside, but there's just moments in here where it's so like deep. Um, not to say that historical romance isn't deep, but it's just, I feel like this is a lot more of like a character study than a focus on a romance yet. Maybe it'll get there, but there's no like flames happening yet, if that makes sense. Um, anyways, so there's this part in the book where um, she washes his hair uh, and cuts his hair and he hasn't had a haircut in years. He was in prison for five years and then he's just been like hopping around towns trying to find jobs. But um, he's really struggling trying to vocalize how he feels because he's never given compliments or anything to people, never really known love. And so Will says, that haircut was the best thing I've felt for a long time. And then it says, she understood perfectly. She too had spent so much of her life in a loveless, touchless world. Odd how a statement so simple formed a sympathetic bond. Oh, I just love this writing. It's so beautiful. Um, one thing I'll say too is like, this is a sneakily long book in my opinion. <laughs> like the writing is very small, the font, and it's like almost 400 pages. So I'm hoping I can get to it all this week, but like I thought this was gonna be my thinner book of the, of the two that I could crank out faster. I don't know if that's gonna be the case. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how I, I do this morning and this afternoon but then um I'm also reading One War Blue and this this on the other hand is steamy so far um so I love this one too though uh the characters in here the the main girl in this book her name I just literally just forgot it oh yeah Kiernan um she is feisty like her whole world is basically being burned down, war is happening, she's being threatened, but she wants to know what's happening. And so like, people are trying to say like, stay inside, stay safe. And she's like, no, I got a gun, I'm fine. I'm gonna go see what's happening. <laughs> Which like, okay girl. Her relationship with Jesse, the main, the union soldier in this book, is so interesting because she's a child um when he's an adult like there it's a 10 year age gap and so he knows her when she's a kid and she's really feisty and he like kind of loves that about her but he obviously keeps his distance then he comes back um and she's a woman now and um they have this encounter where uh he basically like pins her down to stop her from doing something stupid. And um, that's kind of like when the sparks fly. 
And then um, he kisses her uh, back in the house. And um, he kind of just says like, you know, I, I always knew you were someone special basically. Um, but yeah, sparks are flying, things are happening. And she's always loved him from afar, but she's always never felt like good enough, not good enough, but she's never felt like she was on his radar and she knows that he's kind of a playboy too. So um, there's that element. But this is all in the past before, like when the Civil War is kind of starting to brew. And so at some point in this book, it's going to fast forward to the future when he's a doctor and he's saying, hey, I'm going to take over your house and make it a field hospital. So that part is going to be interesting because it'll be kind of like a rekindled romance, I'm sure. So anyways, I'm really enjoying this book as well. I think I'm going to start with this one because I'm more behind in this one. Like I've kind of realized how I need to pace myself and read three or four chapters of each of these books a day to get them finished. So um, yeah, I'm going to start with this one and I'm just going to read all day today. That's my plan. I could go and go book shopping or something by myself today if I wanted to, but I really just feel like staying inside and maybe going tomorrow with my husband when he's not working, um, like as a date night or something. So I think I'm just going to stay inside and just enjoy that I don't have to unpack boxes. <laughs> so um, I am to chapter five of, I just finished chapter five of One More Blue. And I thought I would talk as I attempt to eat my Jimmy John's. I just realized they didn't put Dijon mustard on my roast beef sandwich. And I feel like that's a crime. And it's actually kind of hilarious because in Morning Glory, <laughs> it talks about how this guy gets mad at his wife because she doesn't put mustard on his sandwich. <laughs> And I'm just now realizing how hilarious and uh, ironic that is. Anyways, um, back to One More Blue. So uh, I just have to read you guys this quote because this kind of explains the writing. Wow, this is like really high above. This like explains the writing. Um, In the coming twilight with the hectic rush of the water tearing over the rapids behind him, she felt his recklessness, his energy, his tempest, more certainly than she had ever felt it before. Her blood seemed to race through her system as swiftly and wildly as the water rushed over and around the ancient rocks. Jessie didn't want a drink, she realized. She, Jessie wanted her. <gasps> Ooh. <laughs> Things are about to go down in chapter six. That's for sure. Um, but yeah, this writing is amazing. And um, it's already shown a bond between the two brothers that are both um their last name is Cameron so it's the Cameron brothers and um at some point Jesse decides he wants to be on the union side and kind of like his his um loyalties lie there even though he grew up in in North Carolina and then um his brother Daniel is going and I think he's going to stay on the Confederate side. So that's going to be a really interesting dynamic as well. That's like another element to the story. Um, and I know the second book is Daniel's story. So I think it's cool that it's already showing that side of the story. Like it's going to be a whole world um, developed. So I like that too. But um, yeah, this writing is amazing and... I'm so happy that I decided to read this this for this readathon. I just think it's like the perfect historical romance. You guys, I'm still laughing about the fact that this sandwich doesn't have mustard. If any of you are watching this and are reading Morning Glory with me, or I guess have read Morning Glory with me, um, this is hilarious, right? <laughs> But yeah, I guess I will end this clip. It's nice and short. <laughs> hey guys, so I'm headed off to brunch with my husband and I've convinced him to let us go book shopping. <laughs> um, and I actually have a really fun idea in mind. I'm gonna do a book scavenger hunt. So I have five 
prompts that I want to find a romance for. Um, and the prompts are, um, starts with an M, starts with the first letter of my name, um, a clergy or doctor hero, because I'm really into that right now. And um, One More Blue has that, and I'm just living for it. Um, has, is only bought for the step back. Like, don't know anything about the plot. I'm not gonna look it up. I'm just gonna find a great step back and buy it. Um, what's the other ones? Uh, Non-Regency. And then the other one is a 4.0 rating or better. So yeah, that's my plan. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna find five books um, and hopefully <laughs> I can find ones that fit in the prompts and um, come back and report to you guys what I get. I'm so excited. I haven't actually been book shopping in a long time. Um, so just going out for a breezy Sunday afternoon brunch and then um, bookstore, lots of bees. <laughs> brunch, brunch and bookstore shopping. It's just gonna be awesome. So yeah, that's the plan. So, um, I just got back from brunch and I'm so excited to share with you guys um, what I found at the bookstore. <laughs> Seriously, I found some great finds and I'm just, it was so fun. Um, I kind of made it like a scavenger hunt, like I said. And so um, I had my husband help me. <laughs> I told him the prompts and I wrote them down so I, I wouldn't forget. Um, excuse me, butter. Um, so yeah, so I wrote down the prompts here so I wouldn't forget. So I'll show you guys. Um, starts with M. Well, I'll show you as I go. So, um, so yeah, I went to two, I went to a Goodwill and then I went to the bookstore that had all the romances. And so I'll just show you guys what I got. Um, so the first prompt I had was starts with M, the first letter of my name. So for that one, I found this book, Montana Sky by Nora Roberts. So um, I actually really love Nora Roberts' writing. I read The Obsession last year and really enjoyed it. I think I gave it a four star. And um, yeah, I just think she has, she has great writing, honestly. And she's a queen of romance for a reason, right? So from what I know about this book, it's about this guy named Jack Mercy who dies and he leaves his three daughters his ranch in Montana. And three the three sisters are uh, very different and they all have to live there for a year to get their share of the ranch, I guess. And so um, I guess it's, it's a romance, like romances between the three sisters and then I think it's more like a women's fiction type of deal as well. Let me know if you guys have read this. I, I really think it sounds like a really endearing story and it's highly rated on Goodreads as well. And um, yeah, I couldn't resist the title, Montana Sky. I love Western set books. Um, you guys are definitely gonna see that in this haul. So the next prompt I had was, it had to have a 4.0 rating or higher. And so for that one, I actually found an amazing book. I'm so excited. I found this at the, the bookstore, the bookstore that has all the romances and it is called Destiny and Desire, and it's by Katherine Kramer. And so from what I know about this book, um, it's Civil War set, and it's rated a 4.3 on Goodreads, but it doesn't have that very, it doesn't have very many ratings, but I counted it. <laughs> um, let's see. It says, a nation in flames, a passion triumphant, the Civil War, an epic battle that pitted brother against brother, father against son, lover against lover. 
Reeve Walker was a Yankee. Allegra was the daughter of one of the richest plantation owners in Virginia. She gave up everything to marry him, but that was only the beginning. Driven by her love, she risked prison to see him, disguised herself as a soldier to save him, and when everyone said he was dead, never stopped loving him. For theirs was a passion forged in the captivating flames of destiny and desire. Oh, it sounds so good, right? And look at this like vintage cover too. It's beautiful. I'm I'm obsessed and it's kind of got the yellow sprayed edges going on. So yeah, this is the one I chose for that prompt. So the next prompt was I had to pick one just for the step back. So for that one, I decided to go with this one and you guys like you're gonna die. So this is Forever Ashley and it's by Lori Copeland. I actually think I've heard of this author before, um, but let me show you the step back. I am dead. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? Oh my goodness. It's so cute. Like, oh my gosh. And it says, he defied the boundaries of time to teach her a love, a lesson in love. Okay, so now let's read the back because I literally just picked this out of the, the store based on the step back and I didn't read the back. I, I stayed true. So I want to read the back now. Oh my gosh, guys. <laughs> So, okay, so this book is a time travel romance and it's about this girl who literally falls through the roof in a, um, like an, an inn in April, on April 15th, 1775, the eve before Paul Revere's fateful ride. So it's set in America as well in colonial times. And then um, as well, uh, it features a Dr. Hero, which was one of my prompts that I was super struggling with and I kind of cheated on. So technically I didn't cheat. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited about this one. This sounds amazing. I hope it has good ratings on Goodreads because this is seriously, I'm obsessed. I'm so excited. The next prompt was features a clergy or Dr. Hero. So yeah, I can count this as that, but then... I also saw this book um, as I was walking into the bookstore and it's one I've been wanting to buy for a while. And I saw that they had a movie tie-in edition, which just came out. And so I decided to go for it because I actually really like movie tie-in editions. And it's All Creatures Great and Small by James Harriet. So this is the tie-in edition for the new TV show, I guess, um, that they have on Masterpiece now. I actually really love Masterpiece like TV series and everything. I think they're great. Um, so yeah, I've been wanting this for a long time. This is a nonfiction memoir type book um, about a guy who treats animals in the early 1900s, I think. Um, and it's in the Yorkshire Dales and it sounds so good. I know um, Katie from Life Between Words loves this book and it's new too, which is so cool. It smells new. I love the smell of a new book. I love the smell of an old book too. I can't decide. <laughs> but anyways, so yeah, so this is, um, this was what I was going to count for Dr. Hero because he's a, he's a veterinarian actually. Um, he goes and he treats animals on all these various farms from what I understand. But, um, but yeah, so I guess both of these count for that. That's exciting. The next prompt was non-regency which actually basically I mean literally all of these could count that I've already showed but I have two more to show you guys so the first one is Texas Born by Judith Gold or Gould um so I chose this book because I love anything to do with Texas I'm sold if it says Texas in the title and it's historical and um, this is the story of two sisters, Jenny and Elizabeth Ann, who grew, oh no, they're not sisters, sorry. They're just, they're just friends, I guess. Um, it says, Jenny and Elizabeth Ann, they both grew up in the same small Texas town. Jenny was the dark one, conscious of her sexual power from an early age. Elizabeth Ann was the angelic one, melting hearts with her d delicate beauty, even as she wielded her iron strength. They were opposites in every way, except in the fiery force of their business ambitions and their overwhelming desire for the same man. So yeah, uh, it's like, a, you know, opposite 
types of women go both vying for the same dude. Uh, I am so down to read this kind of book. Uh, it sounds amazing to me and it's Western and it's really thick. Um, it's almost 500 pages and uh, it's actually decently rated as well. I think it was a 4.0 on, on Goodreads. So let me know if you've read Julie, Judith Gold. Um, I've never heard of her, but yeah, I'm willing to give this one a shot. And then the last book I found at Goodwill and it is Charleston by Alexandra Ripley. I actually own another book of Alexandra Ripley's right here, right behind me. This one right here, Scarlet. Um, so this is a sequel, like a, you know, a sequel by a different person, obviously, of Gone with the Wind. So um, yeah, I'm really eager to get to this book as well. <laughs> It's huge, oh my gosh. Um, but anyway, so Alexandra Ripley wrote that, which I think she's more well known for. But obviously doing her research for that book, I'm sure she she knows something about the South. And this is also a um, book chronicling the South in the Civil War. But basically it follows a woman named Elizabeth Trad and it follows her, uh, like the dynamics of her family and then her romances among, I guess, two or three different men, from what I understand. It says like, Elizabeth Trad, these were the men she loved, and it lists them. So yeah, it sounds really good. So it's, it starts off in the Civil War, and then it goes from there. And um, it's actually really highly rated as well on Goodreads, so that's what made me pick it up as well. And I love anything Western or South set, so um, yeah, this was a must buy for me. Um, who knows if I'll get to this one or Scarlet first. I'm probably going to pick up Scarlet first because I'm super intrigued and I've actually heard it's good, even though it's not obviously Margaret Mitchell. Um, it's actually a good Gone with the Wind sequel. So I'm very curious about that one. But anyways, guys, that is my little like scavenger hunt, historical romance um, book haul that I have for you. Uh, yeah, I'm super excited about these books. Uh, I think all of them sound right up my alley. So yeah, I, um, I think I'm most excited, honestly, about this one. I just think after I read the cover or read the back of the book, it sounds amazing. Um, and it being like a time travel thing, I'm all about that. So, and I, I'm sold on this step back. It's so cool. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I'm going to stop this clip now. <laughs> Good morning vlog. It's MLK day today. Happy MLK day. Um, so I'm on PTO today and it's awesome. I love when I have a PTO day on a Monday. Um, best thing ever. <laughs> um, so I plan on spending the whole day today reading um, and I'm playing pickleball, but besides pickleball, I'm reading. <laughs> Anyways, um, I decided I would only come on the camera today when I had something to say about my books because I feel like I've talked about everything else besides book stuff, so I apologize for that. But um, anyways, I spent the morning listening to On the Way to the Wedding and am so enjoying it. I'm close to being done and I am loving the scenes with Hyacinth in, in it. Oh my gosh. She is one of my favorite characters, and so uh, when she got introduced um, towards the end of the book, actually, I was like, yes! And then she's kind of been a pivotal part in making um, Gregory realize that he loves Lucy and then helping them, like, come together. So, oh, it's been so fun to, to listen to that. But I came on the camera not to talk about that, but to talk about... Oh, I just lost my place. <laughs> That's fine. Um, to talk about Morning Glory by Lavril Spencer. Oh my goodness, you guys. This is becoming, slowly becoming a favorite romance, if not a favorite book ever. Um, it is written so beautifully. Everything I have highlighted. So I, I'm keeping my highlighter ready and I have highlighted so many like um, scenes or quotes or... Um, like for instance, like this is one page, but just how she describes characters and how she also describes characters' feelings. Um, 
in our Discord group, we were talking about how she weaves together two people's point of views um, throughout the story so well. It's not like this chapter is this person's point of view, this chapter is this person's point of view. It's just like, you know, each paragraph you could be switching point of views and um, points of view. <laughs> um, and we're loving, I'm loving that. I think that is something that is very hard to do as a writer um, to do well. And she is doing it very well. Um, the other thing I will say about this book that I love that maybe um, I know some other people won't love. <laughs> so I'm just going to say it is this book is so slow burn. <laughs> like you think Mariana Zapata is slow burn? No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, so I'm on, I'm almost to page 200. I'm almost halfway through. And um, it has just, basically the plot of the book is that he comes to her front porch one day and she had put an ad in the paper saying wanted a husband. And so she com he comes and shows up and is like, hey, I'm answering your ad, here I am. So um, they end up meeting and kind of getting to know each other and then, you know, having this trial period before they decide they want to get married. And then they finally decided they want to get married just because for convenience sake, um, they haven't said like, no, like they haven't even said, I love you. So anyways, they get married and that was their first kiss was at the judges in the judges room. Um, very, very low key, literally like going to the courtroom and getting married situation. They kiss there. And they actually say, I love you there, but they were both questioning if they meant it to each other. And then um, they get back and they decided they should share a bed because he's been sleeping in the barn, but they just talk. They don't touch like nothing. So they're just sharing a bed right now. And I just have to read this section because I literally like the longing in this book. Let me read it. Touch me, she thought, like nobody ever did before, like I touch the boys when they feel bad. Make it not important that I'm plain and unpretty and more pregnant than I wish I was right now. You're the man, Will, don't you see? A man's got to reach first. But he couldn't, not first. Touch me, he thought, my arm, my hand, a finger. Let me know it's all right for me to have these feelings for you. Nobody's cared enough to touch me for years and years, but you've got to reach first, don't you see? Because of how you felt about him and what I am, what I did, what we agreed to the first day I came here. Ah, uh, so yeah, they both don't touch each other. And I'm just sitting here like dying for something. <laughs> but it's also so good because it just keeps me turning the page because I'm like, there's so many moments where they they look into each other's eyes or whatever that I, I know it's gonna happen and when it does, it's gonna be excellent. But um, so far, like that is the type of longing I'm, I'm trying to describe here. And they're so complicated, the characters. Um, he comes from, he's a convicted felon, I think I've said this. And um, the real story behind his conviction is horrible, like literally the saddest thing ever. And um, he shares it with her that first night um, that they're a married couple. So that was sweet. And then she's um, also has a horrible past because she grew up, um, she, she, she was born out of wedlock. And so she is, and she's born into this very, very religious home where they literally do some sort of like ritual with her and call her a disgraced child and just make her feel like nothing and she's holed up like she's literally she's not allowed to leave the house ever for like seven years until finally the authorities come and tell them hey we know you have a child in here and you're legally obligated to send them to school so then she goes to school and is ridiculed there for being strange because she's never learned social skills and oh it's just so sad and so literally her only friend um, is this guy that uh, meets her on the road um, who used to give her family ice, like sell her family ice. And that ends up being her first husband. And then he dies. So anyways, uh, it is 
it the characters are so desperate and so willing to love but have never seen love personally really oh my gosh anyways i'm this is a seven minute clip and i was like i'm gonna make this clip fast okay anyways i'm gonna keep reading and i'll let you guys know if i have any other updates so it is um wednesday it's kind of midday actually but um I am hunkering down and I am going to read as much as I can of One More Blue today. Maybe even finish it if I'm uh, feeling crazy. Um, yeah, I just, it's one of those books that once you get into it, it's really easy to turn the pages, but it's just a little bit hard to adjust to for some reason. So yeah, I just really want to read as much as I can of that book. Um, the, the reason I came on this chat on this clip is to say that this new flavor of Mountain Dew, what is it called? Major Melon. Um, they just came out with it and it's kind of a big deal and it's really hard to find. My husband randomly found this at a gas station, um, like 40 minutes away from us. So he bought six of them, <laughs> but you guys, this flavor is so good. If you love the fake watermelon flavor, like literally watermelon Jolly Rancher flavor type of deal in a soda, this is it. It is so good. I highly recommend. And I'm going to be drinking this as I get into that book. <laughs> hey guys, happy Thursday and happy last day of the historical romance readathon. I'm actually kind of sad it's ending, but. Um, I have both dogs on either side of me and they are in a very playful mood right now and so I'm just trying to get this clip done <laughs> so I can wrap up the vlog but I'm sorry if they seem more rambunctious or just want to be in in the clip. This is Lily by the way. <laughs> um, okay so I just wanted to talk to you guys about the books that I finished last night. I finished two books. Yay me! Um, and then I've also determined that I'm going to read the last book today. Um, so I'll show you, show you guys what I'm talking about. But the first book I finished, well, <laughs> the first book that I finished last night was One War Blue by Heather Graham. I've talked about this a lot on this vlog, so you guys know what it's about and how I've been feeling about it. Um, so I will say the, the things that I loved about the book were the setting and the writing and the history all weaved together so wonderfully in this book. I really love Heather Graham's writing. She's a new to me author and I'm so impressed and I definitely wanna pick up the next one in the series because I absolutely love that part of the book. So I just thought the pacing was a little off and then the ending was just so crazy, so out there. Um, so that was another thing that brought it down. But overall, I re really enjoyed this story and I just love that it was set in the Civil War, one of my favorite time periods to read about. And I know I'm gonna pick up the next one in the series. I gave this a three and a half out of five, but if the next one, based on the character that is featured as the hero in the next book, Jesse's brother, Daniel, I have a good feeling about the next one. Like it could be a four or five stars if the same writing and setting and everything is, is continuing. Um, yeah, I have a good feeling about the next one. So yeah, that's, that's my summary for this one. So then the other book I finished was Yay! On the Way to the Wedding by Julia Quinn. Um, yeah, so I finally finished the Bridgerton series. <laughs> um, so this one was not my favorite Bridgerton. Number seven, It's in His Kiss, is still my favorite. Um, and then number, let's see, um, Duke and I is up there, Romancing Mr. Bridgerton is up there, and When He Was Wicked is my second favorite book of the series. This one kind of falls underneath there. It's not my least favorite, but it, I just thought the plot and the whole trope of him thinking he's in love with her best friend the whole time was just kind of convoluted and like I, I just wasn't buying it. And then um, classic Julia Quinn with Bridgerton is um, at least the last third of the book is their marriage um, or like their relationship coming to marriage. So um, I did not anticipate what happens towards the end of this book. It was 
it was wild too. Like it had kind of similar vibes as this book. Like I was just like, whoa, this is going places that I was not expecting. <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I enjoyed it and I love the Bridgerton series overall as a whole, but this one doesn't stand up as a favorite for me. And um, I gave it a three out of five. It was good, it wasn't great. However, I listened to the second epilogue this morning as I was eating and getting ready and stuff. Oh my gosh, it was so sweet. Like, I almost cried. <laughs> I loved how it ended and kind of how it like, um, very sweetly and tenderly wrapped up Bridgerton. I don't know, I just, I thought the second epilogue was amazing. So if I were to rate just the second epilogue, I would give that one a four and a half. Like I, I, I loved it. But, um, but yeah, this story as a whole kind of meh. So three out of five. So then the only other two books that were on my TBR and one of them I am determined to finish today is Morning Glory by Lavril Spencer. I'm this far through it. So I, I literally have, I think like 120 ish pages left. I just need to finish this book. It's so good. And every time I pick it up, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is five stars. So yeah, I just need to finish it. Um, I ended up ordering three more Lavril Spencers on eBay. <laughs> uh, and I own years. It's over there, but I own years by her. But I, I bought three more because I loved her writing. Like, I mean, I still love it. I'm still reading it. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love her second chance romance stories. I'm obsessed. So yeah, I picked up three more. I'm so excited to show those in a haul coming soon. Um, but yeah, this book is seriously one of my favorite historical romances of all time. Like I can already tell you that right now. And I'm so glad I picked it up for this readathon. Uh, all of the people on our my Discord group that read it with us um, all ended up loving it. So yeah, if that tells you anything, you guys, you should pick this up. I, I'm so excited to just finish it and cry my eyes out, I'm sure. It's getting to really sad parts right now, and I'm like, I'm dying inside. But it'll end happy, I know it will. Um, so yeah, and then the only other book that was on my TBR that I have yet to get to, it's in my queue on Libby, I just need to play it now that i finished On the Way to the Wedding, is... Um, Brazen and the Beast. Yay! So that's the final one. Um, I will definitely start listening that to that today, but obviously I'm not going to finish it today. So, um, but yeah, that's my historical romance readathon vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm so sorry for the end clip, how messy it was and how loud, but um, this is real life. <laughs> Anyways, um, please like and comment. I reply to every single comment. And please subscribe if you want to see more from me. <laughs> and I will see you guys in another video. Bye!